2023 will be make or break for Ubisoft. They just had two painfully slow years. Their stock price is now almost 60% lower than five years ago. Like it's time to prove that they're still one of the biggest gaming publishers out there by finally releasing a good game in their now almost dead franchise. By taking advantage of the success of a huge movie IP by showing that they still know what made their series great in the first place and to finally launch a good free title after many failed attempts. In this video I want to look at everything Ubisoft has confirmed for 2023, what I think they will announce and what the focus of the company will be. Plus there will be quick updates on other major projects that they got in the works but that still need more time. So there's a ton to discuss, of course a like on the video would really show your support, subscribe for coverage on these Ubisoft games and let's go. 2023 will actually start out with Valiant Hearts Coming Home. Yes, the sequel to the 2014 puzzle game and it's coming to the Netflix app on mobile and tablets. Also set during World War 1, it follows the first African American infantry units to fight during that war. Expect puzzles and exploration. It's made by the original team and one of three mobile games coming to Netflix and another one of them should be an Assassin's Creed title, which of course could be interesting. No, but the real big thing Ubisoft will launch is of course Skull and Bones, with first an open beta likely at the end of January or in February just before the March 9th release. And that will be a very important moment for the game because all the gameplay and trailers they released just don't make the game look appealing at all. You can only walk around in special hub areas called Pirate Dance, but the rest of the time you're stuck on your ship. Like usually this just one part of a larger game, but now only seeing naval combat footage it just doesn't look exciting at all. But again, maybe the game plays better than the trailer suggests and if that's the case then I think Ubisoft can win over quite a lot of people with a special beta weekend that everyone can try for free. Now I still think it will be a hard sell also because it's the first 80 euro and 70 dollar game from Ubisoft because it's next gen only. Like I still think they will strike a Game Pass deal with Microsoft similar to Rainbow Six Extraction to just get more people to try it out in the hope that they stick around and buy battle passes for the game too as there should be a ton of post-launch content planned. I think the best case scenario is for it to become another For Honor that still after 6 years has a small but big enough player base to support it. Or it could be dead in the water. We will see. Now I will totally be streaming Skull and Bones, I think it will be fun to explore the game together, but I don't know if it will play a lot apart from that. Now luckily the other 2023 games Ubisoft has planned are way more appealing. With up next Assassin's Creed Mirage, right now rumored for August 2023. Although I can see it being pushed even further, which I think is fine, like take all the time you need, because Mirage also feels like a make or break situation for the old school Assassin's Creed fans who have been waiting for a more traditional title since Syndicate in 2015. In Mirage we of course start as a young street thief and then very early on get recruited to join the hidden ones by performing a ritual and doing what is necessary after which we return to Baghdad to assassinate important order targets in the dense streets that should be full of people similar to Unity. The gameplay is more stealth focused with many familiar tools returning but Basim also has new abilities like Assassin's Focus where we can perform multiple stealth kills in quick succession. As I said in my previous video I think Ubisoft will wait with gameplay till either May or June around E3 so they will likely go dark for a while and then do a proper blowout with the release date which I think will then only be a few months away. Like totally check out that previous video also going over the crossover mission in Valhalla and way way more I will leave a link to it in the video description. Like again I think Ubisoft might lose a lot of the old school AC audience if Mirage is a disappointment. Now to be fair and this might sound crazy but I'm more curious about the Avatar game. Like I think I know what I can expect from Mirage. It will probably be a great linear 8 hour game to complete the story and then maybe 12 to 20 hours to do everything else. While Frontiers of Pandora should be more like a traditional Ubisoft Ubisoft open world title but of course with a fancy setting and also with years of post launch content 
probably based on locations and characters that we will see in the new movies that are planned until at least 2028 depending on how they perform. And if the wave the water is any indication then they will likely see it through which a huge opportunity for Ubisoft like they just have to make a good game and this will probably be huge. Now as you might know they wanted to launch this next gen only title around the second film but it got delayed. They really have to get this right of course so while we still only have one trailer we did see an update to the PlayStation Store page and this gave away that the game seems to have up to two player co-op. I would not be surprised if it's similar to the recent Far Cry titles which should be interesting. While it is coming to Xbox and PC, PlayStation has the deal for the game so it could totally show up at a state of play or maybe even get its own stream similar to Hogwarts Legacy in early 2022. After the Wave of Water movie I'm at least more excited to experience more adventures in Pandora. 2023 will also be the year that many long in development console and PC free to play titles will release. I really thought that both The Division Hardlands and X Defiance would already have some form of public beta at least in 2022, but no Ubisoft has been doing a lot of close tests to gather as much player feedback as possible so that when they show these games again they will probably be in a better state and with more content than initially planned. Like the X Defiant footage that you see right here is more than a year old so the game probably looks quite different now. Real quick, this is of course the fast paced Call of Duty style shooter with characters from different Tom Clancy games. So while the Echelon based on Splinter Cell and the Outcast and the Cleaners from The Division are still in the newer version of the game, the Wolves from Ghost Recon seem to be changed for the Phantoms from the same series. And they should have also added DeadSec from Watch Dogs as a group of playable characters. And with no new Call of Duty game launching in 2023, it might actually have a shot at the spotlight as a nice free to play alternative. Also, one of the leads is Mark Rubin, who worked on Call of Duty before. Now, I'm more interested in Division Heartland myself, which is set outside of the city in Silver Creek, a small town in Middle America. You still have your base of operations, but from there, you have a choice out of multiple game modes that vary from PvE to PvP and there should also be a combination of both similar to the Dark Zone. Like the first only had two modes planned but now seem to be up to four and the game should also have crossplay at launch which was one of the big learnings from Roller Champions which did not have that. Like I would not be surprised if that game sadly shuts down in 2023 as nobody really seems to care about it but for Ubisoft it still gave a lot of learnings that hopefully make the next free to play launch more successful that has kind of been their strategy. So once again, 2023 is going to be important. They got the proof that just like EA and Activision, they can launch a successful free-to-play live service as well, which after many years still has not happened. Not only on console and PC, by the way, also on mobile, which includes a big SS Creed title that has leaked all over the place recently. More on that in a moment. First, I want to look at another big full-priced Ubisoft game that I think they're gonna launch in their upcoming financial year, starting April 2023. And then talking about the next Ghost Recon game internally codenamed Over. Like if we look at LinkedIn we see that the game content director on Breakpoint Switch to game director on something new in January 2020, immediately after Breakpoint released. So it already has been in development for three years, which would then be four years by the time it actually comes out, with rumors indicating that Ubisoft plans to launch the title in 2023. Although I can see them push it to early 2024 as well, because Breakpoint was maybe the worst AAA Ubisoft game ever in recent memory, which they made even worse with the NFT experiment and the review of the tone deaf frontline battle royale game that nobody wanted. They cancelled that now but still Ghost Recon is in a tough spot although the recent inclusion of Wildlands to PlayStation Plus Extra and Game Pass did show that there's still a ton of love for the franchise. Like I would not be surprised if they play it safe this time and make a Wildlands successor, no RPG elements or raids but just a raw military shooter that everyone wants in a sunny Bolivia like world. Like I really think that this next Ghost Recon game is make or break for the series. They have to show that they finally learned and then just playing it safe by making a sequel to Wildlands 
might be the best bet. There are, by the way, two other big Ubisoft games that I think they will announce in 2023, but I talk about those in my big games that will be announced in the next year video, which I will link to in the video description if it's already up. It will go live a little after this one. But yeah, overall, it's pretty crazy that we only had Mario and Rabbids as a big Ubisoft release, with the year before that only Far Cry 6. Like, the years have been really slow for the company, but they should finally get back to a healthy release cadence in the coming years. We recently got some really awesome artwork for the Splinter Cell remake that is in the works, and the Star Wars project was recently looking for some playtesters, meaning that they are pretty far along already. The Prince of Persia Sense of Time remake really seems to be undergoing a big reboot now at Ubisoft Montreal, with a level design director starting only four months ago on the project. So yeah, these games are all still a few years away, don't expect them in 2023, including Beyond Good and Evil 2, which is also still early, according to sources inside Ubisoft. And we of course know that there are many big Assassin's Creed projects coming after Mirage, which seems to be part of their initiative to focus on their biggest brands. But their key focus to grow these franchises seems to be with four promising mobile games. We know of three of them, The Division Resurgence, Rainbow Six Siege Mobile, and Assassin's Creed Jade, with the other one likely based on Far Cry cry if I had to bet as that, next to Tom Clancy and Assassin's Creed, is the franchise that they want to focus on the most. And I get that mobile is a big turn off for many people, but I still think it's worth noting that these are triple A, almost console type experiences, but on your phone or tablet. Like these games look insane graphically and also should have features that you come to expect from their console and PC counterparts. Now I can sadly only show you the trailer of Jade, which already looked a bit like Odyssey, but set in China, although the leaked gameplay that is out there basically confirms this, with the game even having the same assassination and finishing animations while it's running on the Unreal Engine. It looks like Odyssey 2, but on iOS and Android, and maybe we see it in 2023 already, as the beta looks pretty far along, and I also don't think that you want to launch it after Red in 2024, as then it will look very dated. Now let's hope that they launch it on PC as well, like Diablo Immortal. Just search Assassin's Creed Jade game play on YouTube, but don't tell anyone I sent you. And before you do that, of course, subscribe if you haven't already for coverage on the big Ubisoft games. I think it will be an interesting year for the company with at least a few big titles to look forward to, even though it will be the first time in three years that we will not have any ongoing support for an Assassin's Creed RPG, which I think is kind of sad. It will feel empty after two years of Valhalla. A like on the video would of course really help me out and check out my previous video on 2023 in general and why we are not ready for the insane amount of titles that are coming. Check it out, find the link on the screen and I will speak to you soon. Goodbye.